Before I start the presentation, I want to say thank you to the team at IBM for all of your help during this project. We would not be able to complete the project without your help, so thank you very much for your assistance. My name is Han, and I will be doing a quick overview of the project. Tyler will talk about what we've done during our apply project and the important aspects of our proposed analytic solution. Um, Sonam will do a live memo and a storyboard. Um, she would mostly talk about neural network and the FFL package. Brian will talk about the chatbot and he will end our presentation with the summary. Um, as we know that money laundering is a global problem, the amount of financial transactions and data received by financial institution is at an all time high. We want to use those data to detect money laundering, but at the same time, keep the information private for our clients. This is where we propose um, a new method where we train a model that updates based on patterns and not on private financial information. So really federated learning is just a new, is a new technology that enables your device to learn from other devices while keeping your data private and secure. So how it works is you first download a generic machine learning model onto your device, such as a phone. Once it personalizes the model, it computes and sends a summary to the cloud anonymously. And this way, it is um, better for everyone and you get more, the data is more secure. Now Tyler will be talking about the next part in our presentation. Thank you, Han, and good afternoon. My goal in the next few slides is to give a quick overview of where we've been this last year, what we've learned, and then turn it over to Brian and Sonam to explain where we go from here. Last summer, we started our journey with IBM Research, and we began by learning more about your company and the work that IBM does. Next, we formalized our relationship with IBM Research through a project charter that outlined the goals and objectives for the project. We then performed an in-depth review of IBM Research and developed a detailed industry market and company analysis. Through this, we learned that IBM Research is a leader in federated learning, artificial intelligence, and US patent development. In addition, we received an initial data set for our project and became more acquainted with money laundering detection and graph-based machine learning. We spent the summer quarter in the business discovery phase of the project. We sought to understand the business and the business problem before we sought to understand the data or potential solutions. In the autumn quarter, we pivoted from business discovery to data discovery. This included developing a detailed data management plan for how data for our project would be collected, shared, and stored. We also developed a descriptive analytics dashboard to better understand and visualize the data that we were given. Through Tableau and Power BI, we created several visual stories to explain and describe our data set and the patterns of transaction that pointed toward fraud activities. Autumn quarter was spent in the data discovery and understanding phase and prepared us to move into winter quarter and deeper analyses. In winter quarter, we dove into extracting new insights from the data through modeling, evaluating, and scoring our models. To guide and govern our data exploration and transformation, we developed a data analysis plan, which provided a framework for the techniques and methods we would use to derive insight and meaning from our data. One of the key ways that we derived meaning from our data was through the use of classification modeling in Azure ML, where we developed several different predictive experiments and scored and evaluated their ability to detect fraud in our data set. With our results, we wrote custom scripts in R and integrated that code with Microsoft Power BI. This was a powerful way for us to show the relationships among accounts and visualize a fraud network. Difficult work that we accomplished in winter quarter in the data modeling phase positioned us well to be able to move into spring quarter and the work that we've been able to do to bring a prototype solution into deployment. Next, we moved into spring quarter. During spring quarter, we received additional guidance, tutorials, and code from you to add to our understanding of federated learning and test the implementation of federated learning on our data set. In addition, during this quarter, we explored integrated cognitive AI services 
into our data and modeling. And Brian will talk more about that later in the presentation. Which brings us to where we are today. In this short and long year, we've learned and stretched and grown in ways that I don't think any of us could have predicted when we first started. And as we grapple with what that all means and what the future might hold for each of us, we are grateful for the opportunity to have, to, to have worked on the cutting edge of federated learning. And we are hopeful that innovations such as this can inform and guide not only the financial services industry, but other industries as well, in particular medicine and healthcare, and solutions for problems we never could have imagined. Thank you for the immersive, challenging, and rewarding year. To talk more about the transformative ways that we think this technology could move us forward, Brian and Sonam will now provide a live demonstration and vision for our next steps. Brian? Our ETL process was straightforward. The data given to us was very clean in terms of data collection and quality of data. We had one source, and that was given to us all in the form of CSV files via box. We extracted the data from the web via box. Uh, the data quality was not an issue, and all attributes were going to be considered in our data understanding phase. So we transformed everything in the data set over. We did this three times, since there were three data sets, three countries, and we did this in Azure Data Studio. After transforming, we loaded it onto Azure Studio servers managed through SQL Server Management Studio. In our descriptive analytics stage, we wanted to take a look at the data and find out what happened. I'll briefly go over what we found out in Microsoft BI and then how we turned that data into a dashboard in Tableau. So we had connected all accounts into a network. As you can see with our network graph, we were able to find out that there were accounts that were connected to each other in one way or another, sort of forming an ecosystem. Uh, we wanted to interpret the historical data to better understand changes that have occurred in the business. So we put all this into Tableau and started visualizing. First, we wanted to see the number of fraud accounts in the data set. So if you look at the top left of our dashboard, we had found out that it was about 384 fraudulent accounts out of 10,000 total accounts. This gave us our first initial clue that the data set would be very imbalanced. We also took a look at the number of accounts in each USAR score range. So between 0 0.33, 0 0.2, and 0.25, the numbers were pretty even, but then when you get to 0.4, you get a significant drop off. At the top right, the risk matrix matrix gives us a good look at if there's a correlation between LP and USAR score. This didn't really tell us too much. The fraud accounts were spread out everywhere. At the bottom left of the dashboard, we wanted to see if there was seasonality trend. Uh, red was 2018 and orange was 2017. At the bottom right, uh, when you think of fraud, you think big money scandal, right? So we had a hypothesis that fraud accounts would have a higher account balance. With this cat and whiskers box plot, that put our hypothesis to bed. Thanks, Brian, for the perfect description of the data exploration results. Now I'm going to start with a quick update of the modeling results which we have achieved in the last quarter using traditional machine learning approach. As Brian discussed earlier, that one of the challenges with the data set was that it was highly imbalanced. It is a challenge because classifiers are more sensitive to detecting the majority class and less sensitive to the minority class, which may give biased results. To take care of this issue, we pre-process the imbalanced data set using resampling techniques like undersampling and oversampling of the data before we fed it into a classifier. For oversampling techniques, we used SMOT, which is a way to generate the synthetic instances of the minority class that is fraud accounts in our case. So as we, keep, as we can see in this dashboard, the results of the oversample data and the undersample data performed better than the modeling results on the imbalanced data set. But we rejected undersampling approach for our case as it would lead to the loss of potentially useful information. To perform the data modeling, we used Azure Machine Learning Studio. We experimented with several classification algorithms and found that logistic regression performed better than the others. As we can see in this dashboard, the F-score precision recall and area under curve for the 
logistic regression proved to be better than the other classification algorithms. This quarter, we focused on training of AML model using IBM's federated learning framework. I'll start with a brief overview of this framework. So basically, it is a Python-based framework for federated learning, and the goal of using this distributed framework is to enable the financial institutions to interact with each other and train their model collaboratively without sharing the data due to privacy concerns. As we can see in this diagram, the three financial institutions can share the model updates to each other, where the updates will be aggregated based on the fusion algorithms used in the aggregator. And the aggregated model update will be sent back to the parties, where the parties will receive the update and run the model again. This process may re repeat several times depending on the model configuration. So the benefit of using this framework is that even the small fi financial institutions who have limited data set with limited fraud scenarios can build a good quality fraud detection system by leveraging the model updates shared by the global model. We customize the FFL to fit the AML model while taking care of the imbalanced data set issue. FFL provided several inbuilt algo and we used neural network to train the model in FL fashion. So now I'm going to give a quick demo of our modeling results. So we'll start the federated learning training process by generating the data for both the parties. Here we can see the data for both the parties have been successfully generated. It has generated the training as well as a test data set. Next, we'll start the aggregator. So here I'm generating the config files. We'll start the aggregator by typing start. So here we can see the aggregator has been successfully started. So the purpose of the aggregator is to run the fusion algorithm and the model updates sent by parties are aggregated according to the fusion algorithm mentioned in the model. Next we'll start by registering both the parties. So here I'll start party one and then I'll register party one. I'll do the same process for Another party. So here I'll start party one, then I'll register it. We can see both the parties have been successfully registered now. So we can start our training process. Once the training is success successfully done, we can check the evaluation results by typing a well command over here. So we can see for party one, the accuracy was around 91.7%, which is quite good. Let's check the evaluation result for party two. So we can see for party two, the accuracy result was around 92.8%. Let's check the other metrics for this classification model. So here we can see the recall rate for party one using FL model is around 78.57% and for model two, it is around 87.5%, which is quite good. And we can clearly see that for party one, the model was able to detect 22 fraud customers and missed only six. While for party two, it detected 21 fraud customers and missed three fraud scenarios. Let's check the evaluation results for the same data set using traditional machine learning model. So we'll compare these results using dashboard in Power BI and we'll figure out which is the better um, machine learning approach. Finally, we compared the performance of FFL trained models with the traditional machine learning models. 
In this dashboard, we are comparing the performance of FFL with the traditional ML model for both the financial institution. The bar in the light blue color represents the evaluation matrix for federated learning models. And we can clearly see that the FFL gave better results for both the parties. And which proved that federated learning is a good approach to improve the performance of the models. Here are some recommendations from our site. So the first recommendation is that this predictive model can be integrated with cognitive apps like Chatbot, which will provide the ease to the banking professionals to figure out the fraud or non-fraud status of the accounts in their day-to-day -day life. Brian will give a brief demo of this Chatbot in the later part of the presentation. And the second recommendation is that if we use FFL in other domains, it can prove to be very successful. For example, in healthcare industry, we can maintain the privacy of the patients while training a model collaboratively. The third recommendation is that including a UI interface in FFL will be a good way to go ahead for customers who cannot use command line to run the model and evaluate the results. Last recommendation is the implementation of customized metric function in FFL for app score, precision, and recall. Since Keras 2.0, they were removed. However, when it comes to imbalance classification problems like ours, they are the desired model performance measures. Thank you. For our last quarter of the program, we needed to come up with a cognitive analytics solution for our project. We wanted to get an outsider's perspective when dealing with anti money laundering. So we came up with a chatbot that could be used with an analyst user at the bank. We connected the database with our AI chatbot so that the chatbot could produce factual information based on what the user asked it. We used Q&A Maker, which is a feature of cognitive services from Microsoft. And I'll be giving a demo of that. First off, let's start by saying hi to the chatbot to make sure it's alive and well. Hello there. Uh, we can ask questions such as, show me a list of all accounts in our data set. Since there's a limitation on how much you can store, uh, we were only able to store about a thousand accounts. Also are in its database. It asked, do you want to check the status of these accounts? Okay, and I said yes. So it says enter the account number present in the list. I could check, let's say account 1000. So either I could type 1000 in and it'll tell me if it's not fraud or not fraud, or I could just ask it, is account let's ask five? Not fraud. Okay, uh, same thing with fraud. So I could ask of all fraud accounts. And of the 10,000 that were in there, we actually loaded in 1,714. So now I could ask, is account, let's say 1714, because we know that's an account ID right there, fraud. And I'll say account 1714 is fraud. Is account three fraud. And also, you could also ask it other questions such as what is fraud? And we linked it to a fact FAQ from certain banks. So it will give you information on how to detect fraud and such. So that is it from our side. It was really a great experience working with the IBM research team. We would love to hear the feedback on our project and we are ready for the Q&A session next. Thank you so much.